I mean, I'm speechless, really. You know how um, um, the locker room wasn't speechless. That's a, that's a jubilant locker room, and it, listen, it's it's just a, a credit to those guys that, that that you know haven't been playing and and how their their work ethic and their stick you know stick to it and and uh, all the extra work they've done while they weren't playing and you know the stay ready thing. Like it's it's a beautiful story, and you know. Uh, you know they got hot. Obviously, you know D'Lo supported them, uh, but it was a uh, uh, you know heck of a heck of a comeback, heck of a win. I just saw this stat. There have been 3,031 instances in NBA history where a team trailed by 25 points into in the fourth quarter. Teams have come back to win only three times. You're now the fourth. What did it take? I'm, to get surpri it I'm surprised we're not the only one. I'm surprised <laughs> it's happened before. That's how cr crazy that game was. But uh, uh, listen, just uh, just an incredible, incredible comeback. Uh, again, the spirit of those, you know, Rondé and and JD making big, big plays, Rody making big plays, and uh, we found a group that uh, that uh, uh, that worked, and and uh, they kept at it. And D'Lo was obviously, you know, in, in another stratosphere. And uh, you know, uh, we knew we had to take some risks with with the threes he was taking. Uh, but I liked, you know, he made the right play to JD to hit that three. So uh, he was scoring, but also just making plays for for everybody. Coach, you. Um no sooner than the second quarter started, you know, you called a timeout. They got it together. Then in the third quarter, they faded back. Well, we just didn't. describe your emotions going no, through this. No, we didn't have it. Our starters didn't have it. Our our top eight didn't have it to, uh, to begin with. And I was trying to wake them up. And uh, don't usually call that many many timeouts. Obviously, I, I went through my timeouts quickly, uh, um, but you know, responded a little bit. But quite honestly, it wasn't until that 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 group, that end group, came in that we really turned it around. The other guys did not have it tonight. The first couple of baskets for the fourth quarter. How much how important was that? Just him. Getting you guys going a little bit there. Oh, it was huge. It was huge. Uh, you know, we ran that little horns play for him. That's his little pet play, and he got downhill and and uh, you know made some unbelievable plays. And of course, to finish at the end. But you know, with that group, everybody's going to talk about the offensive explosion. But I thought their defense was great. Like, you know, we struggled rebounding. We were hitting people. We were getting loose balls. Everything the the first team wasn't doing. Our first group, they they were doing all the little things that our our first group wasn't doing. You talked uh, often about having a veteran group and when guys are out of the rotation, they stay professional and stay ready. Was tonight a perfect example of that? I'll give Jared Dudley a ton of credit because he's he's kind of like the ring leader of that group. You know, uh, you know, they're going over early to the arena. Uh, they played five on five this morning for an hour. Uh, you know, and it, it's just uh, and I know that's their job and I know that's a, <laughs> it's their spirit about it. They've they've uh, they've accepted it. They, they've stayed ready and they've enjoyed they've enjoyed the process of, of you know the little three on three games a little extra work we do uh, the extra sessions and and uh, I've seen other teams where that that group is kind of salty and they they, they they don't embrace the work and those guys have and I'm just so thrilled to see them rewarded tonight that small lineup kind of open up the floor for D'Lo a little bit in the fourth yeah so I think we're small and fast and and uh, Rondi at the five kind of change you know changed our dynamic and uh, his speed and his ability to, to drive the ball we're five out the whole time uh, uh, really changed changed the, the the course of the game for I mean winning teams you know a lot of times they'll say that the players have to eventually take ownership of it you know for a team to really get to the next level I mean you tried the zone you tried calling timeouts left and right I mean was that just a matter of so well, the know. coaching was terrible because yeah. the zone was terrible. The timeouts, you know, I, get, I used up my timeouts. They never responded. I really believe that. Like I, I would have said, win or lose, and and I think we put a group out there, a bunch of players that uh, that, that, uh, that have a great bond and a, a great spirit, and we're working their tails off uh, behind closed doors and behind the curtain, and they really it was 100 percent on them. And and uh, uh, you know that's that's on that's if, if you call that player that's player ownership. They they owned it and. And uh, so glad to see him rewarded. Of all the comebacks this year, it, that was by far the most improbable. I mean, what does that say about the kind of character that this team has? You know, to handle a situation like that. You know, Houston was. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think it's great as this one. I mean, Houston was a heck of a comeback. Uh, listen, I think we were we were at our wits' end. Like there was there was kind of desperation. We turned to that group and and uh, also you know it was a little bit like okay, let's conserve our, our main guys and and kind of play it out. I I. I, I 
you know, wasn't expecting an amazing comeback. I, you know, I, I just have to be honest. And then, you know, slowly but surely, we started, you know, cutting the lead. Again, and I think we got it to 12. I was like, wait a second, this is this is possible. And uh, then, you know, I think we cut it to 10, and then it's like, okay, it's it's game on now, and and uh, ended up closing it out. And what do you think the rest of the guys will take from from a night like this? The guys who were on the bench at the end. So I've never seen a group of starters that more happy for another group of guys. Like, and I told the starters, I said, "You played terrible tonight," <laughs> and you just got it. And they they nodded their head. I don't think they're they're, they're they don't deny it. And and uh, but that's why we pay 17. That's why we have, uh, uh, like you said. Uh, a group of guys that are really bonded and, and uh, together, and, and I think that, that got us over the hump tonight. You talked about on this trip about learning what, you know, playoff intensity. Some of the guys have talked about playoff intensity. What have you, what have you seen from D'Angelo from a leadership standpoint in these last two games in, in terms of his assertiveness? Well, I think despite the upset, the great thing about D'Angelo, you can coach him. I mean, I, I was hard on him tonight in the beginning. You know, a couple of bad shots. I called a timeout, uh, a rogue uh, defensive uh, uh, possession. I called another timeout to kind of yell at him. And, uh, you know, he responds. He never comes back at you, you know, and and uh, he says, okay, coach, and, and, and he gets better. And, and uh, that's a pleasure when you have your, you know, your, your all-star that you can coach and accepts coaching, you know, doesn't, doesn't you know, cop an attitude. And, and accepts it. It's 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 huge. That's leadership to me. All right, guys. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.